my <laughs> second time around. I hope you guys can hear me much better this time. I think I figured out what the problem is, but I'll wait until a few people are in here. So I think I know what the problem was. Um, so I just started a live like three minutes ago and the volume was really low. So please tell me if you can hear me this time so much better. Okay, good. You know what I think it was, dude? I just finished my workout. I like rushed back so I could start this live and I was using Bluetooth headphones and the Bluetooth was still connected. Duh. Oh yeah. Good. Okay. Problem fixed. So sorry guys. That was a total airhead mistake. I think the blood is still in my legs from my squat workout and I just didn't think about that. So I turned the headphones off. Sound is a lot better. So just FYI, if you're doing live videos, don't have your headphones connected to your phone. Hi from Maryland. Hi Celeste. Thank you guys for joining the live. Um, so as I was saying, this is the fourth time I've been doing a live Q&A and I'm doing these during the open enrollment of the Live Lean Way. Hi from Florida. Hi Carrie. Hi. Sorry everyone. I'm not saying hi back, but I see all your highs coming in. Thank you. Um, so open enrollment of Live Lean Way has been for the last three weeks and we've enrolled a lot of students and it's been really awesome you guys i love those of you who are in the course thank you for joining i love your involvement and chatting in the group and like hearing what is what are the most surprising lessons to you and all of that stuff so it's like your legs are noodly feeling right <laughs> yeah totally and i had to like kind of rush through my workout because i had to get on this live so <laughs> i was like my just brain was elsewhere Hi, um, Martha, how much is the course? You can find all the information about the Live Lean Way course on Live Lean TV, but I'll tell you now for open enrollment, it's at a special price of 197. It's just one payment of 197. So you can find all the information about it if you go to Live Lean TV and you look at our programs. It's called Live Lean Way. Hi, John Wall, hey. So this price is only for the open enrollment, which ends on Tuesday. So it's less than a week until it closes. So if you are interested, now is the time. Hi, yes. So you can always, um, you know, if you're curious to know like what's what's the course about, um, you know, all the information is there on our website. So I can answer any specific questions here though. If you have them, I'd love to answer that for you. There's 28 different video nutrition lessons. So it's all nutrition focused. I mean, we have a lot of workout programs too, but it was time that we did something that was really just about nutrition and not just a diet, not just a set of rules that you follow, but really about your mindset. Can you take the course at a later time? I'm financially strapped. Yes, absolutely. But you can't enroll at a later time. So you'd have to enroll now and then you can take it whenever you're ready. But there will be another open enrollment. We just don't know when yet. So, you know, skipping this one is just going to be the unknown. We haven't decided when the next open enrollment will be. But once you are enrolled, you can take it at any pace you want, whenever you want. It's just that the enrollment closes, but once you're in, you have access to the 28 videos whenever and forever. So once I'm stable in the Coast Guard, I'll be supporting you guys with funds instead of fangirling. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. I know a lot of people, like, they watch us on YouTube for, like, years before they buy any of our programs. But, um, you know, once you do, you'll find it's life-changing. Like, I know I was the same way. I was really timid to buy any programs when I first started because, I don't know, you just feel like you can get everything you need for free. But the truth is, when you put skin in the game, you treat it differently. So... That's why, you know, we make programs that cost money and don't give everything out for free because you value it more when you pay for it. And I know firsthand that that is actually true. <laughs> so how do you personally beat cravings? Does the glutamine shot work? You know what, guys? I actually haven't tried that personally myself. Um, Brad says it works, but I haven't tried it myself. But for me, beating cravings is just a matter of like finding something else to eat that's more nutritious than whatever I'm craving. So sometimes it's a matter of replacing that food with something else. Sometimes it's a matter of just indulging in whatever that is, but in a moderate amount. Like, you know, say the craving's chocolate or something. I'll have a little bit of chocolate instead of trying to eat everything else except chocolate. Just have a little bit of whatever that food is, and that actually satisfies that craving better than anything else. Hi. <laughs> um, you should add some mods to your streams. There are some weird people here. Ooh, yeah, I should. Are there already weird people here? I thought that usually happens after like 20 minutes. <laughs> Hi. 
Yeah, you know, guys, I will do my best to, like, block anyone who's getting weird this time. I think, you know, as the controller of this live, I think I need to do a better job of monitoring that, but it's tough. Um, Bruno is right here. Say hi. Bruno. Hi. Hi, buddy. Your fans wanted to see your cute face. Hi. Yeah, he's just sleeping beside me. He um, always wants to be nearby. So basically, you know, whatever room I'm working in or wherever I go, he's like three feet away from me. Sometimes actually touching, like making contact. He's such like a mama's boy, such a lover. He's awesome. He's totally awesome. Bruno is so cute. <laughs> he gets so much love when we go out on the street. Everyone is always like, oh, what kind of dog is he? How old is he? He's so cute. And yeah, he like gets a lot, a lot of attention when we go out. He's really cute. Yeah. Okay, so um, it'd be great to find a ridiculously simple macro recipe book. Nothing fancy. Any recommendations? Yeah, totally. Um, our simplest one is called the Live Lean 20 Diet. And of course, macros provided for every single recipe and then also uh, meal plans in there that are set up with macros and everything. And the whole base for this recipe book is only 20 ingredients and you have 20 recipes that you're making. So it's not like you have to sift through 200 different recipes, it's just like 20, you know? So it's a good amount of like meals, snacks, sides, desserts, whatever, but it's um, just only like ones that we make really often and that are really easy to make. So if you're looking for a simple macro recipes, Live Lean 20 diet is the best one we have. Easy enough for 20 year olds, yes. And it's using very common ingredients that you can find in like any grocery store. So it doesn't use like anything complicated. You're not gonna be cooking with saffron and turmeric and whatever. It's just like sweet potatoes, chicken, tuna, things that like a college kid could afford, you know? So, um, do I recommend a vegetarian or dairy-free diet? I have been vegetarian myself. I actually don't recommend it. I found I wasn't as strong, lean, and athletic. That's me personally. I'm not saying that nobody can be. I'm just saying for me, it didn't make me feel as good as including animal protein sources in my diet. Dairy-free, yes. I mean, I still eat occasional dairy, but I don't think dairy should be like a staple in your diet. So yes, that's what I feel. Dairy is um, kind of reactive for a lot of people. A lot of people are dairy intolerant. And also it's hard to find high quality dairy sources. Like a lot of the dairy sources we have access to are just not, not farmed very well. And okay. So difficult to figure out macros with calories with portion sizes, too many numbers. Celeste. Okay. I'm kind of glad you brought this up because I feel like this is the case for most people. Like even friends of mine, sometimes I'll talk to my girlfriends and they'll just say they don't want to bother because it's all too overwhelming. And I understand that mindset, and I think I used to feel that way too, um, but just kind of like taking, putting your guard up and saying like, I'm not even gonna bother to learn because it's too much, is preventing you from making any forward progress. And to think that you have to be perfect from day one and that your day has to be perfect macros and you know that uh, you need to know what all, all the numbers are of every single meal that you consume, I think is kind of putting it on this pedestal that is not achievable for anyone. So if you're at that place where you're not following a macro plan or you just have no idea what your nutritional goals are, you don't even have goals and you're frustrated by your results, I think what you need is to take it in steps and you know, not to keep bringing everything back to the Live Lean Way, but really it is, that's what the Live Lean Way was created for, was to help you navigate that confusion and remove the confusion from it to help you figure out calories, macros, and nutrition for living lean in a simplistic way that's not overwhelming. And that's why the content is dripped out in 28 days is because if I told it all to you in one day, you'd be like, I can't, it's too much for my brain. But over 28 days, it allows you to really absorb everything one topic at a time. And that's, I think the key to making progress is taking it slow. Because if you're gonna like drastically change your diet in just one day, it's gonna be way too overwhelming for anyone. So instead of putting macros and everything up on this pedestal that where it's unachievable, I would say break it down into steps and follow a course like Live Lean Way that's gonna make it easier for you. Okay, I missed a whole boatload of questions while I was talking, so I'm gonna go back and get just the most recent ones. Please ask again if I missed yours. 
So, um, <laughs> let's see. Do you, do you count macros, thoughts on intuitive eating? So I personally don't count the macros that I eat daily, but I do have like a meal plan. I make meal plans for myself. Anytime I want to see changes in my body, I will construct a meal plan and then I'll follow my meal plan. So in, the, in a sense, you could say that's counting macros, but it's not really counting them as much as it is following them. And to me, there's a really, really big distinction between following macro goals and tracking macros. Do you guys understand the difference between that? Is like tracking macros would be like, okay, I just ate a sandwich and now I gotta like open some software and like enter in every ingredient in it and then find out, you know, how many macros I have left for the day. That's what tracking is like. Following a meal plan is like, okay, I'm when I'm making that sandwich or putting it together, I know how to construct it so that it fits with my goals. So I hope that makes sense and you can see the difference there. I feel like constructing your meals based on your goals is so much easier than just eating whatever you feel like and then figuring it out later. But I used to do it that way. It was a whole lot harder for me. So things have been a lot better since I set goals, followed the goals, and got the results. Okay, so Christy, what do you think of high fat, low carb? Okay, so high fat, low carb, this is all the rage now, guys, with the keto explosion. I feel like a lot of people are shifting over to high fat, low carb. Um, you know, because everyone's talking about how your body can learn to burn fat for fuel instead of sugar and it's better for your cognitively and helps you lose fat and whatever. Um, I personally feel like a balanced macro split is the healthiest for all sorts of functions. And I mean, we're not just talking about fat loss here, but your body, when it's at its healthiest, will have its best chance at losing fat. So... I think throwing your metabolism off by always like drastically switching your diet, like if you went way high carb and then you decided to go way high fat, it's very confusing to your body. So it's always having to shift gears and change modes and everything. I think the people that I see have the best success are always kind of finding that balance. Balance is so key when it comes to fitness and health and fat loss even too. I mean, in order to lose fat, you do need to be in a slight deficit so your body is burning the stored fat, right? Because anyone who needs to lose fat has stored fat. So you're starting with more than you need. So you have to be in a slight deficit to correct that, bring it back to normal. But um, as far as like what you're eating, like if you're eating a high fat diet, that doesn't necessarily mean your body's storing more fat. That's why, you know, in the title of this video, I put eat fat to lose fat because I think there is this huge misconception about dietary fat, the difference between dietary fat and body fat. And just realizing that those are two separate things, that the fat we eat is not the same as the fat that we store. So um, I'm trying to remember what the question is that I was even just talking about right now. Like, what do I think of a high fat diet? I think it's okay, but I think it's much better for everyone to follow a somewhat balanced macro ratio and eat a variety of foods, not cut out any macro group Totally. Okay, so I um, ephemera, I read somewhere that weight training promotes a bone density increase. Do you know why and how? Um, definitely, I think, you know, weight training makes you stronger in so many ways, not just your muscles, but also your bones. Um, I can't say that I really know the science behind how it changes your bones, but that is a good question. Sorry, I'm not like not a scientist really, but I know from personal experience that um, you feel stronger in every way when you weight train versus when you don't. So I don't know specifically how it affects your bones, but I do know that it makes them stronger. <laughs> okay, if I have a late workout and then an early one the next day, is that detrimental? Should I get more rest? Ideally, you wanna have at least 24 hours between all your workouts. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because I think there is a time and a place for two days, especially if you're an athlete and you're training for something specific. I'm a fan of two days, um, but I would say at least 12 hours between workouts would be great, ideal for recovery. Um, but if you feel you need more rest, then you should get more rest. So since three weeks, I'm doing strength training and lifting 10 pounds on each side. Is that enough or do we need to increase weights to get lean? Um, yeah, that, that's probably enough for where you are right now, but it, of course, depending on the exercise and like, as you get more experience with weight training, I do think you should eventually use more than tens. 
Um, but you know, now, I don't know, it may not be time yet. Okay, so Dream Parlor, I've been getting decent results by taking the macro and cal count test online to get a good idea of what I need, then avoid crap foods altogether. Um, and guesstimate because life is not maths. <laughs> Yes, okay, see, this goes back to the point that I was just ranting about, about how like you need to take nutrition off that pedestal of perfection and realize that if your nutrition is better than it used to be, your results are gonna be better than they used to be. So just always focus on getting better and not on being perfect. And I feel like everybody would be making so much more progress if they focused on that instead of getting totally discouraged that they're not perfect because none of us are gonna ever be perfect. Do I eat raw meat? Um, no, no, not, not often. I mean, maybe like at a fancy restaurant, if they have like, just kind of recently, I went out with my girlfriend and we had an appetizer that was like a raw meat, like really thin sliced, but I don't like just pick up raw meat and just eat it like that, I cook it. Um, hmm, why are you not getting notifications of our live videos? I don't know. That's a bummer. If you have your notifications turned on, there's a settings tool on your YouTube, like right next to the subscribe button. If you click settings, you can select turn on notifications. But if you do have that turned on, I don't know why you wouldn't get it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, um, how to stretch, how to stretch my hamstrings. I tried lots of ways and get fall in some limbo. It stops stretch. Karate Kozak, I'm sorry, I don't really understand that question. How to stretch your hamstrings. Um, I could show you some hamstring stretches, but I'd have to move too far away from the camera so I'd miss too many questions. But I actually did a live video about hamstring stretches on Paleo Hacks Facebook page. If you guys follow paleohacks.com, I write for them and I've do, been doing live videos for them. I'll actually be on their Facebook tomorrow live if you want to hang out with me then. Um, oh, sushi is considered raw meat. And <laughs> do you like sushi? Is it considered? Yeah, I guess raw fish. Is that considered raw meat? Then yes, I guess I do eat raw meat because I do like sushi. Um, <laughs> so will I bulk up if I lift weights? I want toned muscles, but I want to stay lean. I lift weights and I don't think I'm bulky. So um, if you want to get similar results to the results I've gotten, then I would suggest training like I train and you can do so with like any of my workout programs like Live Lean Formula for Women or anything like that. I show weight training. I did I do lots of weight training. Actually I just finished downstairs in the gym squatting with heavy weights and I don't think it doesn't make me bulky. So I really believe that that's a myth. And of course you have to have your diet on point for your goals too because if I were to lift the way I lift and also eat in a surplus I think I would bulk up. So if you want to stay lean, it's all about, you know, setting up your diet correctly and then lifting weights will help you develop that lean muscle. So I like to intermittent fast, um, but my trainer said eat every three hours. Is it good to fast or eat every three hours? Courtney, it totally depends on what your goals are. If your trainer is telling you to eat every three hours, it, pro it may be because you're not eating enough to support your training the way he wants you to train or something. So um, I think for anyone who wants to reduce their overall daily calories, intermittent fasting is a helpful tool. I've talked about this on other lives before, but um, lives, <laughs> sounded like I said lies. Um, on other live videos, we've talked about intermittent fasting versus eating frequently throughout the day. I feel like if he wants you to gain muscle, that's probably why he's telling you to eat more frequently. Um, or if you're having any issues with your blood sugar dropping during workouts or something like that, it could be the reason why. But you want to ask him what's his reasoning for telling you that. Um, because whatever you decide to do should be based on a reason. <laughs> Not just because the trainer said so. So ask him for more information. Like, why are you telling me to do this? And if he has a good explanation that you agree with, then you can change it. Um, thank you. So which of your program is best for fat loss and to lose belly fat? Um, Formula for Women is my best fat loss program, but I'm coming out with another version of that that's going to be even better. Formula X is coming this summer. I'm working on it right now. Um, but 
for right now, I suggest Formula for Women, the original version, is the best total body fat loss program that I have. But Brad has some amazing ones as well. If you guys don't have equipment and you wanna work out from home, Live Lean 15 is really awesome. Live Lean Afterburn is really amazing for fat loss. Um, so yeah, that's what I would recommend. Best pattern at gym, cardio after or weight training or before. Also good to combine HIIT cardio on strength train days. So I personally do cardio after weight training or between. I never do it before because I don't want to tire myself out for the weights portion of the workout. So in general, like the workout I did today, it like mi I mix things together. So like squat, like heavy weighted squats, for example, with 20 reps of jumping lunges. So that's kind of like, you know, intermittent cardio, I guess you could call it because I'm doing strength training. And then immediately after I finish the set, I set rack the weight and then go straight into the jump lunges. So my heart rate is like, Whew, um, skyrocketing right in between the lifting sets and then I recover and then I go back to the strength exercise like that so I'll do a lot of stuff like that or I'll do finishers at the end of my workouts but I never do cardio before strength training and, but some days I do cardio only so it just depends on the on the program I'm following uh, you love the videos where I do specific exercises for specific areas. That's cool. I mean, those have been so popular lately. Like, I can't even believe how popular the videos are that are for the belly pooch or love handles or inner thighs, stuff like that. So if you guys like seeing that stuff, I'll do more of it. Got a recent request about armpit fat. <laughs> and I'm wondering, is should I really make a workout about that? I'm like, hmm, tell me if you guys are interested. Do you want to work out about that? <laughs> Is it bad if I pack a lot of my macros at midday? Sometimes I feel sleepy afterwards, but on mornings, I'm not that hungry and at night come back too late from work and I just feel like sleepy and that's fine. You can eat the majority of your, your food during the middle of the day, whenever you want, whenever works for you, really. You have, everyone has to do what's working for them. So if your life schedule makes it so difficult to eat in the morning or at night, then just eat midday. Do what's gonna make it easier for you because at the end of the day, stressing out about when you eat is, worse for you than you know doing what you're doing so low stress keep it low stress and do what works for your lifestyle and your present situation yes yeah, strength training is awesome <laughs> do i have any questions about letting go of the scale um i've i've reached my goal weight feel like i'm fixated on a number yes i think um that was hard for me too because i was always fixated on numbers in the beginning of my journey but i think it's just a matter of you getting used to the fact that the weight doesn't mean what you think it means and when you can look in the mirror and say damn i look good like that's when you know you've arrived at your goal and of course your body is going to continue to fluctuate like when you're in maintenance mode sometimes you'll gain a little weight sometimes you lose a little weight like our bodies just fluctuate we're living organisms it's just the way it is so um, i think getting used to going based on the look and feel that you see in the mirror and how your clothes fit and everything is just it's just so much more real than the number on the scale it means so much more so i think it's just a matter of time and just reminding yourself of that that's going to help you get off that fixation of the number at least that's what it was for me. Also, when you do a side-by-side -side comparison and you see, like I've shown you guys before my photos, back when I was 120 pounds or whatever, I was at 24% body fat. And then I see myself at 130 and I'm like 17. So I think seeing that like side-by-side -side and realizing that back when I used to think 120 was better than 130, I didn't know that there were very different variations of that, right? So sometimes your body weight can be higher, but your body percentage can be lower. And so, you know, it's the, it, it helps you realize that the number on the weight scale is not the right number to pay attention to. Um, okay, so please, only fitness or nutrition questions here, please. Um, some good calf exercises, calf raises are good. You can do them standing, so just, lifting up onto your toes like that. Um, you can do calf machine exercises at the gym. Um, you can do any kind of exercise where you're, you know, flexing your calves. <laughs> Sorry, that's not a very specific answer, but I actually don't train my calves a lot, hardly ever. But stairs is also good for toning your calves too, and I do a lot of stairs. Okay. Um, 
Do I play any sport or dance? Not really. I used to play volleyball and I used to do track and soccer, but that was all in the past. Currently, I don't play any sports anymore. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. Hey, okay, I'm trying to find legit questions here. Isn't that hit? Yeah, I think what you're talking about is like when I'm describing my workout, that is, that's what I consider hit is when your heart rate gets up and then it gets down and you keep alternating between high heart and high heart rate and low heart rate. Aloe vera for fat loss. I have never heard of it used for that purpose. Usually aloe vera is like very healing and it's good for like sunburns and skin irritations and stuff like that, but I've never heard it used for fat loss. John Wolf, I'm 20 years old and I must lose 40 pounds, I already lost eight. How much time should it take to lose it all? John, it totally depends on your, um, on your starting point, like how heavy you are to begin with. People who are heavier to start lose weight more rapidly than people who are not as heavy to start with. So the time it takes is completely dependent on that. And then also a lot of other factors like how much exercise you're doing, what your diet is like, um, your, the speed of your metabolism, and all kinds of factors. So I really could not be able to predict it. But um, Sounds like you want it to happen in the fastest possible time. So of course, paying attention to your diet, making sure you're eating the right amount, and then you know, get, being active daily is gonna help you get rid of it the fastest possible. And if you've already lost eight pounds, you're well on your well, way, so keep going. Um, okay, so. <laughs> okay, thoughts on apple cider vinegar. Um, this is a good one. I actually really like apple cider vinegar. I find it to be a really healthy and tasty vinegar. I like the way it tastes, but I don't drink it. I just use it on salads. So you're probably asking if I take it as a supplement, but I don't. I just use it as a food or as a food condiment. So that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> Let me know if you want to know anything more specific, but I put it, I use it as a salad dressing condiment. So I figured out my, hi Ashley, I figured out my BMR and my deficit calories seem to be high, about 2,100 calories. I'm 5'5", 175 on a weight loss journey. Does this sound right? I usually eat less than this. Yeah, so Ashley, it's really common with women to do their calculations and figure out their numbers. And like, you know, the first reaction is, oh, that's so much higher than I thought. But it really is for a girl of your size, like, you know, 2000 calories sounds about normal to me. Um, if you're very active, which I'm assuming you are, I could see it going up to 22, so that doesn't alarm me. But I know, it, like when I first started my fitness journey, it would have, because I think you're so used to being told 1200 to 1500 for females, right? But the truth is, it depends on your size, it depends on your unique individuality. Um, but it is not uncommon for a woman to require 2000 or more calories, especially an active woman. So I don't think that's unusual. Okay, um, <laughs> best exercises for increased mobility, um, dynamic stretching. So I don't know if you guys watched my Insta story, but I showed some of that yesterday. I was doing it out at the park. Any kind of stretches where you're flowing through them, I think is the best for mobility. Um, I love to do like lunges, um, like overhead reaches, back bends, anything like that, I think is great for mobility. So Lady Rosalie, hey girl, I joined 30 pounds for my nasty desk job. I usually lose fat very quickly when I dial in on my macros and training, but I'm having a hard time getting on track. What to do? Okay, so desk, the desk job thing, I get it. Like when you start a desk job, you your lifestyle changes a little bit. You probably went from being a little bit more active to being more sedentary. But just because you have a desk job doesn't mean you have to be sedentary because you know, I have a desk job too, but I work at a stand desk. Like right now I'm standing and I'm at my, I always have my computer like, you know, at, on a platform where it's basically waist height, right? So I don't have to hunch over or, or sit in a chair because sitting is the new smoking. You guys know that sitting is not good for you. You don't want to be sitting for too long. So if you can stand, you're already burning more calories. Your glutes are more activated and uh, you know, you're moving around a little bit more, so it's definitely more active and you'll burn more calories throughout the day. So get a stand desk, ask your boss about it, or just make it happen whatever way it needs to. Bring in a cardboard box if you have to to work so you can stand at your desk instead of sit. 
Um, the other thing is you can take breaks from your desk job as often as possible. Take breaks, go for walks, do some stairs, do whatever you need to do. The other thing is bring your own food to work because a lot of people who have desk jobs, their coworkers bring in a bunch of unhealthy treats. There's always donuts sitting around and that can contribute to the desk job weight gain. So if you can combat some of that stuff, then I'm confident you can get your weight back on track. But try, just try to be more active and eat better. Okay, so I know we're like going past 30 minutes here. I'm just gonna take a few more questions because I don't wanna make these videos too, too long. Um, and then I will shut it down. So how do you keep fit during pregnancy when you're really exhausted first trimester and beyond? Um, the key is like when I was pregnant with Kyla, my key was convincing myself to go for a walk even when I didn't feel like it. If you can just get your body in motion, even though every part of your being is saying, I just wanna lay in bed, you know that's not the right answer. You know that's not the right thing to do. And it's okay to have one or two days out of the week where you do lay in bed, but if that's happening every single day in a row as a string, that's how you're gonna get out of shape. But if you can, you know, most days of the week, just convince yourself to get your feet out the door, just put some sweats on and just go for a walk. Um, so I did a lot of that when I was pregnant with Kyla and, uh, I think it really helped keep me in shape, a lot of walking. And in our neighborhood, we had a lot of hills. So I would choose to do the steep hills and get myself winded. And then, you know, a lot of times when I was out walking, I would all of a sudden feel in the mood to do lunges or to do other exercises too. So I think it's just about getting that momentum, even though you're resisting it. Yeah, oh, thank you. Okay. Um, Liliana, are you ever bringing back the vlogs? They were awesome. Yeah, actually, we talk about it a lot. We do. But every time we talk about it, we're like, oh, man, nobody realizes how much like work it is to do daily videos unless they do it. Any of you guys are YouTubers or daily content creators, then you know what I'm talking about. But it is exhausting to create and publish videos every single day of the week. And when we were vlogging, we were doing seven days a week on the vlog and then our additional videos on Lovely TV as well. And it just takes so much effort to create videos, to edit them, to publish them, to follow up on them, answer questions on them. It's just like, it was overwhelming. So as much as we do want to do the vlogs, we just hesitate <laughs> for that reason. But it is so fun to capture the memories of our family life and everything. So I think, you know, we may be convinced if we get enough votes from you guys. Thank you for asking about that. Okay, so uh, here's a random one to end on. Okay, I love it. This will be the last one. Um, what's the most interesting martial art to you and would be the best workout, you think? Um, dude, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not that familiar with martial arts. I've done Muay Thai in the past a little bit. Um, and I used to teach cardio kickboxing back in New York and what else? I think I did like karate when I was little. Dude, I, I really, I can't answer this question because I just feel like I haven't seen them all, but I think I really liked karate because of like the self-discipline that it promotes and the focus, you know what I mean? Like I always felt like I was so focused in that class because the teacher would make you focus, you know? And I thought that was really cool. It was almost like Zen, like meditation, like, so I don't know. I'd probably do karate. <laughs> Kai wants to, or Brad wants to get him and Kai in like father daughter karate. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, um, yes, I'm going to end the live here, but I just do want to remind you guys that live lean way open enrollment is closing on Tuesday. So I'll just be doing one more live next Tuesday. Um, cause I do, I want to be here to answer all of your guys' questions about the course or about nutrition and help get you situated with that. So I will be here again next Tuesday at 2.30, same time, same place. So please join me then. And um, if you ever have any questions about Live Lean Way, you can always drop me a note on any, any social media here on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, anything like that. So um, thank you for your time with us. Good, thank you. Yes. So we're always here for you guys. We answer a lot of questions every day and we love your guys' questions because you know, knowing that you're engaged with this channel helps us feel like the information is really helping people and we love your stories. If you have an amazing story, 
based on stuff that you've learned from us, please do share it with us because we love those and they make our day and they, they are the reason we continue doing what we're doing here. Because like I said, it, it really is a lot of work, but it's work that's so satisfying and fulfilling to us when we see your guys' lives are changing. So awesome. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. I'll see you next Tuesday at the final live Q&A. And uh, I'll, I'll also see you on Thursday with my next video. Thanks. Bye.